Tremorton collapsed infrastructure. A tragedy unfolding in the bus the city of Tremorton. Life had always followed a predictable pattern. People bustled to work, children laughed in the playgrounds, and the skyscrapers reached into the sky like a testament to human achievement. But in June of 2022, everything changed in an instant. At precisely 9.17, AI tremor started to shake the city. It was slight at first, barely noticeable, but within seconds it grew into a monstrous force. The earthquake had struck Tremorton, and the city that was once a symbol of stability was now trembling in its very foundations. People screamed and scattered in all directions, desperately seeking shelter. In the tall office buildings, workers felt the floors move beneath their feet, the windows rattling in their frames. Panic set in quickly, and the once orderly streets turned into chaos. Mary, a young mother, was at the local park with her five-year-old daughter, Lily. She felt the ground shake and grabbed Lily's hand. Hold on, baby, hold on, baby, hold on, she cried as the trees began to sway violently. On the other side of the city, in one of Tremerton's iconic skyscrapers, Tom, an engineer, felt a different kind of fear. He knew exactly what this shaking meant, and the ramifications were horrifying. Everyone out, now, he shouted, herding his colleagues toward the stairwell. But as they started to descend, a massive crack appeared in the wall, and the building lurched sideways. They were trapped. Meanwhile, emergency services were overwhelmed. The fire department was battling blazes caused by ruptured gas lines, while the police tried to control the panicked crowds. Rescue workers were scrambling to respond to reports of people trapped in fallen buildings. Mayor Johnson, just as shocked and frightened as his constituents, quickly declared a state of emergency. He urged everyone to stay calm and follow the instructions of emergency personnel. Deep inside, he knew that this disaster was beyond anything Tremorton had ever faced. Hours turned into days as the search and rescue efforts continued. The media dubbed it the Tremorton tragedy, and images of the devastated city were broadcast around the world. Among the ruins, personal stories of heroism, tragedy, and survival began to emerge. Tom, despite being trapped in his building, managed to keep his colleagues calm and directed them to create makeshift barricades to support the failing structure. They were eventually rescued, but the experience left them all scarred. Mary and Lily found shelter in a local school that had been turned into a makeshift community center, but many others were not so fortunate. Families were torn apart, homes destroyed, and lives were lost. In the days that followed, the true scale of the devastation became apparent. Buildings that had once touched the sky lay in rubble. Roads were impassable, bridges had collapsed, and the entire, and the entire infrastructure of the city was in shambles. The people of Tremorton faced a long and painful road to recovery. The earthquake had not only shattered their city, but their trust in the very ground beneath their feet. They would rebuild, but the scars of that fateful day would remain forever etched in there as the initiant to wear off. The citizens of Tremorton found themselves immersed in a reality far grimmer than they had ever imagined. The city, once filled with life and energy, was now a landscape of destruction. In the midst of this chaos, people from all walks of life began to show their resilience and compassion. Neighbors helped neighbors, strangers reached out to each other, and a sense of community began to rebuild itself from the ruins. Dr. Sarah Jacobs, a young surgeon at Tremorton General Hospital, found herself in the eye of the storm. The hospital was inundated with victims, and the medical staff was stretched thin. Despite exhaustion, Sarah worked tirelessly, performing surgeries back to back and attending to those whose lives hung in the balance. A few blocks away, an elderly man named Walter was trapped in his collapsed apartment building. A retired construction worker, Walter knew the dangers of the shifting rubble. As hours turned into days, his hope began to wane, but he clung to life thinking of his grandchildren. The story of Tremorton was unfolding in snippets of tragedy and triumph. Young volunteers organized food and clothing drives, while engineers and construction workers collaborated to assess the stability of the remaining structures. But the emotional toll was immense. Children were traumatized, parents were grieving, and the sense of loss was pervasive. Among the hardest-hit areas was the historical district, 
where centuries-old buildings had crumbled like sandcastles. One of these buildings, known locally as the Haunted Manor, had always been shrouded in mystery and legends. Its collapse during the earthquake only added to the intrigue as strange noises and eerie sightings were reported by rescue workers. Rumors began to circulate that the spirits inhabiting the Haunted Manor were restless and angry. Though many dismissed these stories as mere superstition, others were convinced that the destruction had awakened something otherworldly. Meanwhile, Mayor Johnson worked closely with state and federal authorities to coordinate relief efforts. The government declared Tremorton a disaster zone, and aid poured in from all over the country. The days turned into weeks, and the city slowly began to find its footing again. The debris was cleared, temporary shelters were erected, and plans were laid out for rebuilding. But the scars ran deep, and the echoes of the earthquake lingered in the minds of the people. Tom, the engineer who had been trapped in the skyscraper, found himself haunted by nightmares. His hands would shake uncontrollably at times, a physical manifestation of his inner turmoil. He joined a support group for survivors, seeking solace in shared experiences. Mary and Lily, too, struggled to find normality. Lily became withdrawn and fearful, while Mary wrestled with feelings of helplessness and guilt. As the months passed, Tremorton began to rise from the ashes. New buildings were constructed, roads were repaired, and a sense of normalcy returned. But for those who had lived through the tragedy, the city would never be the same. The earthquake had laid bare the fragility of life and the strength of the human spirit. It had brought out the best and the worst in people, and it had left an indelible mark on a community that would forever be defined by that fateful day in June. In the end, Tremerton's story was one of survival, resilience, and rebirth. It was a testament to the power of hope and the unbreakable bond that connects us all. The haunting memories of the horror, the suffering, the dead, and the wounded would never be forgotten. They were the echoes of Tremorton's tragedy, a somber reminder of nature's fury and human endurance. The rebuilding of Tremorton was not just a physical endeavor, but also an emotional and spiritual one. The earthquake's aftermath had left a void in the hearts of the people, and filling that void required more than just bricks and mortar. People like Sarah Jacobs were still trying to heal from the trauma. The young surgeon, who had performed miracles in the emergency room, found herself unable to escape the memories of those she couldn't save. Sleepless nights were filled with haunting visions, and a heavy guilt weighed on her shoulders. Mayor Johnson recognized the need for a communal healing process and initiated programs to provide mental health support. Therapy groups, counseling sessions, and community gatherings were organized to help the people of Tremorton cope with their shared grief. Meanwhile, the stories of the supernatural occurrences around the haunted manor continued to spread. Paranormal investigators were drawn to the site, and some even claimed to have captured evidence of spectral activity. The tales added another layer to Tremerton's rich tapestry, weaving the extraordinary into the fabric of everyday life. In the midst of the rebuilding process, Walter's story became a symbol of resilience. The elderly man had been rescued after being trapped for nearly a week and his unwavering determination had captured the hearts of the nation. News channels followed his recovery, and people from all over sent letters of support and encouragement. Walter's love for his grandchildren and his humble wisdom touched many, and his story was a beacon of hope in a time of despair. Among the volunteers and relief workers, new friendships were forged and old bonds were strengthened. Tom, the traumatized engineer, found comfort in volunteering his skills to rebuild homes for the less fortunate. He discovered that giving back was a way to heal himself, and he became an active member of Tremorton's revitalized community. The children of Tremorton, too, played a vital role in the city's recovery. Schools implemented programs to help students understand and express their feelings about the earthquake. Art and writing became therapeutic outlets, and children's drawings and poems were displayed in public spaces, turning pain into creativity. Slowly but surely, Tremorton began to thrive again. The city's spirit was indomitable, and its people were bound by a shared experience that transcended all differences. A year after the earthquake, a memorial ceremony was held at the city square. A monument was unveiled, bearing the names of those who had lost their lives. Tears were shed, stories were shared, and Tremorton took a collective moment to remember and reflect. 
the haunted manor was preserved as a historical site and tours were conducted, blending the legends of the past with the realities of the present. The site became a symbol of Tremorton's unique identity, a blend of history, mystery, and resilience. Walter, now fully recovered, became a local celebrity and a grandfather figure to many. His words of wisdom were quoted, and his story was taught in schools as an example of human perseverance. The people of Tremorton had weathered the storm, and in doing so, though, they had discovered strength and solidarity they never knew they had. The city's heartbeat was strong once more, and its story was a testament to the extraordinary power of ordinary people. In the end, Tremorton was not defined by the earthquake, but by how it rose above it. The tragedy had become a catalyst for growth, transformation, and unity. The echoes of that fateful day were still there, but they were no longer a painful reminder of loss. Instead, they were a celebration of life, love, and the unbreakable human spirit. Though the city had rebuilt and people were moving on, there was still one unresolved mystery that captivated the minds of many. The legend of the haunted manor had grown, and it had become a significant part of Tremorton's identity. Yet, some were skeptical, dismissing the accounts of ghostly apparitions as mere fabrications. Among the skeptics was Dr. Emily Harris, a renowned paranormal researcher. She had spent her career debunking myths and was determined to unravel the mystery of the haunted manor once and for all. Emily arrived in Tremorton with a team of experts, equipped with state-of-the-art technology. They spent several nights in the haunted manor, recording, analyzing, and examining every nook and cranny. The town watched with bated breath as Emily and her team went about their investigation. Some were hopeful that the legends would be proven true, while others were eager for the myths to be dispelled. Days turned into weeks, and finally, Emily held a press conference to reveal her findings. The room was packed, and the anticipation was palpable. We have thoroughly examined the haunted manor, she began, her voice steady and confident. We have reviewed countless hours of footage, conducted various tests, and analyzed all available data. The room was silent, hanging on her every word, and what we found, she continued. Pausing for dramatic effect is truly extraordinary. The crowd erupted in whispers, eyes wide with surprise. We have captured evidence that suggests there is indeed something inexplicable happening at the haunted manor. While we cannot definitively say that ghosts exist, we cannot deny the presence of unexplained phenomena. The revelation sent shockwaves through Tremorton. Emily's endorsement of the legend added credibility to the tales, and the haunted manor became a symbol of Tremorton's mystical allure. People came from far and wide to visit the manor, and it became a thriving tourist attraction. The revenue generated helped fund further rebuilding efforts, and Tremorton continued to grow and flourish. As the years went by, the memory of the earthquake and the ensuing hardship began to fade, replaced by a sense of pride and accomplishment. Tremorton's people had not only survived but thrived, turning tragedy into triumph. The legends, the stories, the shared experiences had all woven together to create the rich tapestry of Tremorton's history. A history that was as real as the bricks and mortar, as tangible as the friendships forged, and as mysterious as the shadows in the haunted manor. In Tremorton, the past and the present, the ordinary and the extraordinary, the physical and the spiritual all coexisted in a delicate balance. It was a city that had found its identity in adversity, a city that had learned to embrace its complexity and contradictions. And it was in this complex tapestry that Tremorton's true beauty lay. A city, a community, a family bound together by the extraordinary power of the human spirit. If you liked the story of Tremorton's collapsed infrastructure, please hit the like button and share. By doing so, you'll be among the first to receive our fascinating upcoming stories. Thank you.